David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. Senator Rand Paul is running for president of the United States, and he recently said that uh, there is a certain amount of unease in all of our big cities in America. And of course, he was referring to race riots and the burning parts, burning parts of uh, Ferguson, Missouri, and Baltimore, Maryland, and also people are fully aware that these riots and uh, this violence could spread like wildfire to other cities. Baltimore is only about 40 miles north of Washington, D.C., which could easily erupt into serious riots at any time. But did you know that these burning cities were actually prophesied in your Bible? That it is prophecy in your Bible, Isaiah 1 and verse 7 states that your cities are burned with fire. Does that prophecy have anything to do with us today? Well, you can prove that it does. God tells us in Isaiah chapter 1 why we have these violent protests and the burning of the cities. And He also tells us how to solve that problem. And I think we ought to be very much interested in that. How do you solve that problem? Even if uh, the nation doesn't respond, and individuals do, and heed God's warning, God says He will protect them. So He doesn't want people to suffer through something like this, but look, if, we, if America is the world's number one superpower, as the world tells us it is, most of people say that, well, just, just do you think God might have some concern for this nation? and that He might have some prophecies for this nation. Isaiah addresses the, his message to Israel. Now, we have been teaching for over 50 years that, that, that two nations represent Israel in this end time, and the name Israel is on them, and that's on the U.S. and the United Kingdom, and not on the little nation in the Middle East. Now, our book on the United States and Britain and Prophecy proves that to you, but you need to prove it to yourself. Don't believe me, God says, and even commands that we prove all things. Prove all things. Jeremiah 17, verse 5 says, Cursed be the man that trusts man. You're under a curse, so don't believe a man, but you do believe God if you understand and know God. But before we get into the burning cities, I want to give you a little background on Isaiah chapter 1, from Isaiah the book of Isaiah, anyhow. Isaiah 30 and verse 8, we'll begin there. Now go write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Now, the time to come expression means the latter day in Hebrew. That's what it means. And when Isaiah is talking about writing it on a, on a table or a tablet, anciently that's the way he did it, but why did he write it in a book? Why did he put it in a book? Well, it tells you here in these verses that, he, that God put it in a book for this end time. This is dual prophecy. And I'll give you a scripture to indicate that in a moment. But notice verse 10 of Isaiah 30, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Now, are we going to accept God's word about this? Because that is the way we are naturally, and that's the, the way it is naturally in Israel. We don't want the truth, even though we act like we do. We really do not. We want people to preach smooth things, not right out of the Bible the way Isaiah teaches it. Now, uh, listen, Isaiah knew there was danger in delivering God's true message in anciently, and it's never going to be received like it should be, that's for sure. 
because tradition says if you look at his life that they actually took Isaiah because of his message and just cut his body in two. Now that's how violently they apparently dealt with him because he didn't teach them smooth things. He had the love for those people and the courage to tell them what God said and not some deceit that they wanted to hear, which always ends up in, well, burning cities and violence and chaos and anarchy. It always does. It's been a way of life in this world. This is not anything new. It's something that's been going on for thousands of years because men want to hear smooth things. Are you willing, am I willing, to hear what God has to say about burning cities and how to solve the problem? Because He certainly does give us a very clear uh, way to solve those problems. But look, the, do people really want the truth? Now, the, God says His Word, John 17, verse 17, His Word is truth. The president said that, well, the people in Baltimore, they want the truth, but we'll see if they really do. Do they really want the truth? Do we, does anybody really seek the truth? Not very many. Not very many people at all, and God warns us that this, this is the way to prevent suffering. This is the way to prevent all of this chaotic violence that tears everything apart. And what is it going to do to the nation? And what is it going to, to uh, result in as far as our foreign enemies are concerned when they see what's going on within the nation, as they obviously do? But I'll tell you this, this is a, a sign, really, of what something that is coming just before the Messiah comes to this earth to rule it. Note, notice verse 11, here's how we're treating him today, but soon it won't be allowed. This won't be allowed to happen. Verse 11, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Now, can, this is referring to God's own sinning church, and they cause God to leave that church, but it's dual. He's also talking about two nations of Israel that just cause God to leave, and they won't, they won't listen to God. They won't hear God's Word because they're listening to smooth things. That's what it's talking about. And this is primarily for this end time. You can prove that in a hundred different prophecies right there in your own Bible. But most people want smooth things. They want deceits. But look, what is it when you cause God to just kind of disappear from the scene and you won't listen to Him, you won't even pay attention to Him, you scoff at the very Word of God itself and cause him to just fade from the scene. That's the worst sin of all. And if you think there aren't going to be repercussions, you don't, you don't understand. Notice Isaiah 41 and verse 22, this is the dual nature of prophecy. Verse 22, let them bring forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things, what they be, that we may consider them, and know the latter end of them, or declare us things to come. So we wrote in our booklet that in, the, in this verse, God specifically says that we need to look at the former events and consider them if we're going to understand the latter end of God's prophecies. In other words, to understand prophecy for this end time, we must also be a student of history and especially Bible history. Even Paul said in the Corinthians, he said, look, these uh, examples in the Old Testament are for our learning today upon whom the ends of the world have come. They're for examples for us to learn from, to teach us today, even in this 
latter third of uh, man's history, the way Paul was looking at it at the time. Isaiah 1 and verse 1, the vision of Isaiah the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and hear, give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, or sons, and they have rebelled against me. Now, look, this is God, and through Isaiah, He's not only speaking to us today, but He's saying, O heavens, hear, O heavens, and hear, O earth, God has spoken. He's spoken to the righteous angels. He's spoken to Satan and the demons. He's spoken to all mankind today and all mankind who has ever lived. He says, now hear this. Here's what's going to happen. And here's how you, you better really be careful or you're going to get in trouble. About 25% of the New Testament is uh, comprised of quotes from the Old Testament. And most of those quotes come from the book of Isaiah. So this is a New Testament message as well. This telling, is telling us what, we're, what is happening today. If you think about the uh, Baltimore today, there was, there, there's been $1.8 billion of stimulus money sent on, spent on that city in the last five years for education and teachers unions and employment and social uh, benefits. At least that's what we're told. But the problems have grown worse. Money is not the solution. It never has been. It goes much deeper than that, and that's what God is trying to get us to see. Something is frighteningly, frighteningly wrong, and God says, now don't you people go pointing your fingers at the leaders because you're all to blame. We're all to blame. That's the truth. That's not a, a smooth message, but it's the truth. God says and blames us all. We're trying to solve these problems our way, and it simply cannot be done. Here, God is just addressing all the, the inhabitants of the universe and the earth. They all need to hear this message. It's the widest scope possible that you could even think of. Now, people want to go ahead and impugn the Bible and, and, uh, and scoff at the Bible. They can do that. But let me tell you, God says the burning cities are going to intensify if we don't learn a lesson, if we don't learn what God is telling us. Then, then the time is coming soon when the scoffers are going to vanish like snow in a hot sun. They're going to fade away because everything has come to pass exactly as God spoke it to, the, to us. He, as He spoke His message to us, God has spoken, it says here. Verse 3, the ox knows his owner and the ass his master's crib, but Israel does not know. My people does not consider. What is it Israel doesn't know? Well, they don't know God and they don't know the Bible because they've caused Him to go away. Well, they just don't listen. And they won't listen to people who do talk about this very much at all. But anciently, God chose the nation of Israel to reveal God to the world and show, them how, show the world how God would bless people if they obeyed God. Now, the, the, uh, the, they failed, and in this end time, Christ has built His church to stand up and deliver this message and reveal God to the world and under, give God's revelation of His Bible to the world and give them true understanding of what is happening on this earth. And 95% of God's own people have turned away from Him and refused to deliver that message because they wanted to teach smooth things and deceits. And God said, well, I'll have a little remnant that will deliver my message, will deliver and show you how to solve these enormous problems that cause all, just all 
kinds of suffering to the people. It's not something to take lightly. Notice verse 4 and 5, Ah, sinful nation, people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors that have forsaken the Lord. There's the problem. They've forsaken God. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger, and they are gone away backward. Why should you be stricken anymore? Why, God, is pleading with us. Why should you be stricken anymore? Why don't you listen to me and solve these problems? That's the truth of God. And then he concludes from saying, You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart is faint. God says our minds are just sick with human reasoning that is wrong and deceitful and anti-God in far too many cases. The whole head is sick. The whole heart is faint. We're too cowardly uh, to really do what needs to be done. We have far less courage to give our lives than the terrorists, for sure. We are afraid of almost everything, it seems, because we don't know God and don't let God empower us and give us the courage that we need to deliver His message. Notice verse 7, your country is desolate, your cities are burned with fire, your land strangers devoured in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Your cities are burned with fire. See, he's prophesying that it's going to get worse if we don't learn a lesson from God. He's, he's, he's pleading with us to hear his message and to listen to him and to fear him. But we have degenerated in, our church, in God's own church. We have degenerated in God's own nations that, are, that have the name of Israel on them in this end time. And things are getting much worse very fast. Notice in verse 8 it talks about Israel anciently as Zion, and then it talks about the daughter of Zion. It's dual. Anciently there was Zion, today the daughter of Zion. In the end time, it's all duality. Notice verse 8. Let me read that to you. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. He's just telling, giving you a picture of what it's like here, a poetic picture really, that uh, it's like a little hut after all the harvest is, is over. And it's out there and it's desolate. And that's now like symbolic of the work of God in his own church. And it's also symbolic of the way it is in the great superpower of Israel. They're just a little hut that have no Im real impact like they should have. Because they're getting further and further away from God and degenerating more and more into the smooth things and the deceits that are anti-God. People can reject this if they want but it's going to be to their own shame and their own chagrin, that's for sure. Notice what it says in verse uh, 9, Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been likened to Gomorrah. Okay, God leaves a very small remnant that just tells it like it is and does what God says. Then notice verse 10, Hear the word of the Eternal, you rulers of Sodom, and give ear unto the law of God, you people of Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Eternal. Hear what God has to say. Do we hear it? Do we really hear it? Does anybody think that most people hear this? God says it's going to get so bad that you are going to hear. But it may be too late physically for many if they don't Wake up soon and hear those things that are not smooth. It's getting bad in many ways, and we need to hear the truth of God as never before on this earth. We need to hear from God what He speaks to us, and He does speak to us if we will allow it. He does speak to us, 
And you can prove that so easily if you're willing to do so. Notice here is a key scripture. Here's what happens because of our sins. Verse 15, And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Talking to his own church who hasn't delivered the message, and they're going to be, uh, their hands are full of blood because of, because of it. They're responsible for what's happening out there to a great extent. But he's also talking about the people in the, the, in the nations of Israel who are praying to God, obviously, for help and, and answers. But God says, if you're not hearing my message, I will not hear those prayers. Even if you have many prayers and you look so righteous in so many ways, if you don't do what I tell you, I will not hear you. Is that an unsmooth truth? I think it is. I think this is a super critical verse because this is where you don't have God's power. It is God that empowers us. That's, that's, there was a time when uh, this would strike fear in our minds, I believe, but not anymore. It, uh, I think, oftentimes just creates a, a scoffing attitude. But this is really the number one need we have. And God says it is sadly lacking. And yet God gives power to His people. Power to, to do great things. Do, do heroic ex, uh, exploits, as He says in uh, Daniel 11. God, Paul said in Philippians 4 and verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. He was a powerful man because God empowered him through his spirit. And that's the way it should be today. And God says, notice in verse 18, well, he said, come and let us reason together. I'll just paraphrase it. God uh, said, come and let us reason together, says the eternal. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. That's verse 18. And God says, they'll be like wool, white wool, if you'll just listen to me and hear what I have to say. God, it, it correctly reads, come and reason with me. Come and reason with me. Well, how do you do that? Well, through the Bible. You come and you reason with God in His Bible, and He'll re uh, reveal that truth to you through that little remnant, God says. Because they are going to have the truth and they speak the truth of God and God empowers them by revealing more and more and more as long as they heed His warning. Verse 19 and 20, If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with a sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. You see, the rioters and those that are violently protesting may think that they're going to come out of this the victors, and they're going to come out of this the winners. God says, no, it isn't going to happen that way. The people, your enemies from without, are going to exploit the anarchy and the violence and the division within our nation, and there aren't going to be any winners from within the nation. That's what God is saying. And I think that's something we ought to really take heed to and, and just listen to what God says in this book that is and was specifically written for today, for Israel today, in this end time. And we've proven over 50 years to you who that is. And if we, we'll send you all kinds of material so you can know and understand all of these prophecies that I've talked to you about today, and you'll understand duality, Bible duality, that is so important for us to understand. Where God says, look, you're going to have, have to suffer until you get this message. We're going to have to get it. There is no other way out. This all leads directly into the second coming of Jesus Christ to this earth. It's all a sign that His return is imminent. He's going to come and He's going to rule this world with a rod of iron and with His love, and that's what we need today. 
Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. Riots in Ferguson and Baltimore are fulfilling Bible prophecies. The Bible forecasted that the most powerful nation to descend from ancient Israel would be the United States. The Bible also predicted that American cities would be burned. But the descendants of Israel are rejecting God. They refuse to hear his sobering warning. They scoff at God's word, even though that word describes the exact situation America finds itself in right now. God's Word also communicates the clear solution to gang violence, arson, looting, and mass violence in America's streets. To escape the dreadful fate that awaits those who won't hear God, we must study Bible history. To learn more about mankind's reluctance to face reality, request Gerald Flurry's free booklet, Isaiah's End Time Vision. Isaiah's End Time Vision examines how 2,800-year-old prophecies of Isaiah apply to today. Also request our free reprint article, Prophesy Not. And to learn what lies behind Ferguson and Baltimore, order where America's race riots are leading. You'll also be sent a free subscription to our news magazine, The Philadelphia Trumpet. Each month, The Trumpet looks at today's most relevant headlines and shows how they relate to Bible prophecy. Your subscription has already been paid for. Request Isaiah's End Time Vision, Prophesy Not, and Where America's Race Riots Are Leading. All our literature is available to you at no cost or obligation. Order now.